Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of the Rag Rug Scrappy Jacket Project here on my YouTube channel. My name is Benjamin. Uh, you already know who I am probably, but if not, I am a textile and fashion designer based in Los Angeles with a focus in slow fashion as well as uh, ecologically friendly, um, I guess, environmentally friendly, zero waste, low waste fashion, all sorts of stuff like that. So this is part two. Uh, last episode I posted last week and on that one I was talking about how I measure my warp or at least how I measure for how much yarn I'm going to need for my warp as well as how to measure how much yarn is on a cone of yarn um, that I just didn't know how much was on there anymore. So at this point I am done measuring my yarn. <laughs> so this is the last bit of warp that I needed to measure here. Uh, I ended up doing three total warp chains for this project. Uh, so as some of you might remember in the last video, I need 516 ends of four yards each for this project. So what I did is I did a warp chain of 100 ends a warp chain of 200 ends, and then this one right here is a warp chain of 216 ends. So that is a total of 516. Uh, I did this for a couple of reasons. The first one is, if you see here, this is the end of my warping board here. Um, this is 216 ends, and they're not all crammed on there. They are comfortably on the warping board, but if I tried to fit any more than that, it's going to start getting either very cramped or they'll start falling off the peg. So I wanted to make sure to avoid that. And frankly, I find that it's better at the end of the day to do more warp chains that are easier to manage rather than trying to get it all in one big group. Um, Cause you're gonna end up separating the stuff out anyway once you get it on the loom. Might as well just have it in three separate warp chains. The good thing about this is that it doesn't really matter what the tension is on the warping board. Um, I try to keep it at a pretty normal tension as I'm winding, but you know, everything is a little bit different every time that you wind a warp or start measuring a warp, I should say, uh, based on your mood, what you've been doing that day, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is put, put it over here on my loom. Uh, so you can see the other two warp chains hanging over there, uh, but I am going to go ahead and tie the chokes on this warp chain and make sure that the cross is kept. <laughs> and what I'll do then is transfer it all over to my loom. I'm going to do front to back warping. So what that means is I start at the front of my loom and I'm going to slay my reed with all of my threads, then pass them through my heddles. From then, then I'll tie on to the back apron bar and wind it all onto my loom. The thing that I need to keep in mind for this project and for future projects is on my loom over there, I have eight harnesses. And oh uh, gosh, a few years ago, I moved 100 heddles from the back two harnesses, so 200 total, onto the front two harnesses. And what this has done is I have six harnesses with heddles and two that don't. So I think what I'm going to finally do is I am thinking about moving those heddles back to the back two harnesses. That way I can do eight harness pattern work in future projects and not have to think about it at that time. Um, I'm going to be weaving and plain weave for this project. So frankly, like, I don't really need to do that. I can just deal with what I have on the first four harnesses and be fine. But I'm trying to think in the future <laughs> uh, that I'll probably want to do some eight harness pattern work uh, in the coming future. So I really want to be kind to my future self by doing it now. So I'll show you how I do that in a... In, this video probably um, because I'm going to need to do that before I thread my loom. So I'll see you in the next clip. Good day, everyone. It is Friday at the time of recording this. <laughs> um, and it is going to be warping day and hopefully some weaving, maybe. It depends on how much I can get done in the next couple of hours or a few hours. So uh, my warp chains are right here. <laughs> so I know I mentioned 
in my last clip that I finished winding my warp chains on my warping board. And here they are. So I have a warp chain of 100, warp chain of 200, and then this one is 216. So I'll get these warped up on my loom today. Now, here is my loom. Let me move this out of the way. I have to hang them up because otherwise my cats will attack them. Yes, that one right there behind me, she'll do it and so will Rowan. So my loom is an eight harness loom. And what that means is right here, there's eight shafts or eight harnesses. Um, however, um, I, a project a long time ago, I moved, you heard this in the previous clip. <laughs> um, I moved the last two harnesses, the, the heddles on there to the front two harnesses. So I have 200, 200, 100, 100, 100, 100 on six harnesses. So um, f before I start this project, what I want to do is remove the 100 additional heddles on the first two harnesses and put them back on the back two harnesses because I have plans in the future of doing an eight harness project. Um, and I just figure before I get going on this project, let's just take care of it. So that's gonna be my first goal for today. It's really easy to do this. You just have to be really smart about it because um, it's really easy to screw it up. And by screw it up, I mean just make a lot of work for yourself later. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. And you may ask, Benjamin, you have a high castle tray on your loom. How are you going to get the harnesses out? Well, luckily, um, on the Shacked Baby Wolf and also on their Mighty Wolf, it's the larger of the looms, um, the bottom tray inside the high castle comes out. So you can pull the harnesses right out from the center of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And um, I am going to use my new coffee table that just arrived um, this week to, to do the work. So uh, what I can do is lay a blanket over the coffee table. That way it doesn't scratch up the surface, but also, um, moving these heddles is going to be a really noisy process and I don't love that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll do a time lapse of me doing it. Maybe I'll give you a little bit of an explanation of how I move heddles from one harness to another. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that in this video. Sure, why not? <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in the next clip. Alrighty, so I've already taken out the back two harnesses, um, which were empty, and now I'm gonna take out the front two. So, I also need to clean these. Anyways, um, so each of my harnesses is attached to the Jack and Lamb assembly, which is this right here, by a little nut, a little hex nut. This one's already loose, so I'll be able to undo that by hand, um, but sometimes they get a little tight and you just need to persuade them a little bit with either a hex wrench or, oops, uh, I just used a small pair of pliers. Uh, super, super easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out um, and find the wing nut that I just dropped, <laughs> or not wing nut, uh, hex nut that I just dropped. But these are really easy. So this is the top of my castle. You saw me remove that. Um, I don't think I can do it with just one hand, but basically I'm gonna lift this up. Oop, maybe I can as I move you. Um, easy to pull out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down and get the other one out, and I'll go ahead and switch to how I remove heddles from one harness and add them to another. <laughs>
right, so please ignore the sound of my cat playing in the background. Um, <laughs> so what you're going to need to transfer heddles from one harness to another is some waste yarn. I like to use a long needle as, there we go, um, a long needle. So this is a six inch weaving needle that I use with my zoom loom or my pin loom and some coffee. <laughs> so the important thing here is I'm going to need to count out 100 heddles from each of these harnesses and then I'll transfer 100 heddles to my empty harness. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bore you with me counting heddles um, in real time, but uh, I will show you the part where when, when I start the transfer. So uh, I'll be back in just a little bit. Look at that, 100, perfect. So you'll notice that these are all facing the same direction. All of these heddles, um, the eyes are all facing the same way. Um, so kind of angled towards the left as I'm looking at it. So what I'm gonna do here is, first I'm gonna move these heddles in as well. and move these kind of into a central spot here. I'm gonna tap my harness a little bit and just make sure that these are all very flat. So I don't want any big bumps up here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my string, pretty decent amount of it, let's see. So I wanna make sure I have enough to go around and tie. And I'm just gonna thread my needle, not too far. And the very tops of the heddles may have to do this in, there we go. <laughs> My needle isn't quite long enough to go all the way through, <laughs> which is fine. Um, so what I've done is I've gone through every heddle up in the top here um, with my thread, my cotton twine. And what I'm gonna do is tie them relatively tightly, not too tightly. They don't need to be super tight on here because um, we're gonna be putting them directly back on another harness. So I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom here. Just tap. What that does is it gets them from stacking on top of each other. And I'm gonna measure out the same amount of yarn which is about three times the length or the width of my pile of heddles here. These are what are called inserted eye heddles. And what that means is that the eye has been inserted into twisted wire and then coated in another piece or a another bit of stainless steel. Um, there are other ones that are called flat steel heddles, which are even thinner than these. And I used to have those, um, but I prefer the eyes on inserted eye. They're a little bit easier for my fingers to get through. Okay. So I'm just guiding the needle along the heddle bar here. And I'm just going to tie this off. Down here. All right. So, um, before I remove these from the harness, I have these little binder clips here. 
I am going to put those here and then I need to grab the others. Um, let's see here. Ooh, there it is. Um, so this is just to keep these pedals on the pedal bars. <laughs> I don't need the, to tie them on. Um, I just need to keep them on the pedal bars as possible. So on here I have pedal bar clips and um, that's what my loom comes standard with. Some people have hooks. Uh, the opening for mine are on the opposite side. So I'm gonna flip and I'm just gonna pull down on the clip, pull out the pedal bar and do the same for the top. And then very gently, I'm gonna pull up on the pedal bar and pull them out of the harness. And then what I can do is very gently pull my pedals out. And if I did this right, they should all come out on one string and they did. Yay. So I'm gonna set those aside for a second. And while I have this here, I am going to insert the pedal bars back into the harness, unclip this side, and I'm gonna count out 50 pedals. Great, so now I have 50 heddles on each side of the clips and I can clip the pedal bars back in place, remove my binder clips, and this harness is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my empty harness and put these back on. Um, and it's basically the same process, just backwards. So I'm gonna remove the pedal bars and slide the pedals on, and then it'll be ready for, for me to put back in my loom. Um, and I will time lapse this next part, basically. That way you don't have to listen to me be boring. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I'm about ready to put my harnesses back in and I just wanted to show you the process in case you ever need to do this. So again, on this is my baby wall. Uh, on here, I took out the first two and the last two harnesses uh, and I want to put them back in, but you'll notice so the center of the harness has the hole where the post comes up through and then the nut gets screwed back on. But right here is where the heddle bar clip is. And personally, I like having the heddle bars all in the same area. Um, but additionally, I want all of my heddles to face the same direction. So it makes the threading process way easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that when I put my harnesses back in, that my heddles are in the same position and that my heddle bar clips are also in the same orientation. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them over and start reinstalling these. I need to go get the nuts and I'll be ready to do so. All right, so I have my harnesses. I have four nuts.
And as I was placing the heddles on, I tried to make sure that they were in the right orientation already. Except, I think I need to do that. So the heddle bar clips are gonna be on the same side, but the opening is gonna be on the wrong side. That's okay. That only really matters when you're removing the harnesses uh, or the heddles. Whew. Gotta be careful. So the cool thing with this particular loom is all of the harnesses are the same dimensions. Um, what's different is the jack and lamb assemblies are a little different. So they, in order to get a clean shed, the ones in the back raise up a little higher than the ones in the front. Beans, what are you doing? <laughs> Come here, baby. Yeah. Hi. Do you want to inter interrupt this video? Is that what you're doing, baby? <laughs> what you doing? <coughs> yes, I know. Are you a YouTube star? <coughs> yeah, I bet you are. Uh-huh. <coughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> These cats. Any who's. <laughs> I'm going to continue putting on the harnesses. I only have two left. Which are the back two. Um, as I was saying, the jack and lamb assemblies in the back raise up a little higher than the ones in the front in order to get a clean shed. And I'm just doing these nuts finger tight. There's no need at all to tighten them any further. Right. And you just also wanna be careful with your fingers because there's a lot of pinch zones here. Someone's doing work around here. So I'm just gonna gently lower that harness down in. And they're all ready. I'm gonna get started with threading my loom or at least slaying the reed, threading the loom, warping the loom. And we're gonna, we're gonna start weaving today. Um, I will say before I get any yarn on here, I'm gonna wipe down my loom. Uh, it's gotten kind of linty and dusty because I it's been probably a couple months since I warped this thing up. So I just want to get it nice and clean. So when I'm weaving this project, the cloth is nice and clean. So I'll see you in the next clip. All right. So I'm running into the first little snag of the project. It's not a project ender. It's just annoying. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, I think I mentioned in part one of the video, or maybe either part zero or part one of the videos, that I need 16 ends per inch for this project. And I thought I had an eight dent read. So what that means is that there's eight openings per inch. And I was going to double slay or put two threads in one dent. Well, it turns out I misremembered, I have a 10 and a 12 dent read. So that means I'm gonna have to do some finagling and I'm gonna keep using my 12 dent read, um, which is already on my loom here. And what I'm gonna need to do is every other dent, uh, I'm gonna have to put two threads in. Um, so it'll be a single thread, then a double thread, single thread, double thread, single thread, double thread, um, which will give me 16 ends per inch. 
It just means I have to pay a little bit more attention <laughs> when I am uh, slaying my reed. So that's gonna be the next process. I have my warp chains nearby. I'm gonna go ahead and get my lease sticks um, in the cross and get all of that situation set up here. And then it's time to slay the reed. Hello, you're down here now. <laughs> Um, it's time to slay my reed. Hey, uh, so as you can see, I have my warp chains attached to my lee sticks. Um, I kept the cross on all of them. I didn't screw up anything, uh, except for one thing, uh, which is one of the warp chains accidentally got caught on itself. So it no longer opens like a crochet chain, which is a little bit of a bummer, but not the end of the world. I just have to go from the back end and untie it. Uh, <laughs> but I don't need to do that yet because right now my goal is just to purely get all the ends threaded through my reed. And again, what I'm going to do is every other dent, I'm going to pull two threads through. Uh, so I'm going to go grab my slaying hook. Um, my reed hook, as well as some scissors so I can cut off the chokes from up here and more easily access the yarn. So, uh, I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> so, let me take this out of my mouth. Um, I have a new pair of scissors. These are amazing. These are ginger scissors. Um, just regular snips. Uh, I think they're two and a half inch, if I remember correctly. These are amazing. They are... <sighs> I just love them. I love them. I love them. Um, and then I'm going to show you what I have here. So this is a brass reed hook. This is what comes with most shacked looms, or at least most uh, shacked floor looms. Um, you use this to pull yarn through the reed. And then this is a slaying or a, a heddle hook, technically. And this is what you use to pull yarn through heddles. However, I usually just use my fingers for these heddles. This is usually, this one actually in particular is for a rigid heddle loom. Um, but I sometimes like using that as well to do my read. So I have both of them. Um, I'm gonna start with the brass. The reason I don't particularly like using the brass one, it makes my hand smell weird. <laughs> so, and that's, just because of my skin, I believe. I have I have weird skin, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this prepped. And then um, I'm gonna actually do this one warp chain at a time. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this one and be careful not to cut the black yarn. Boom. Let's get this one. Boom, and then here at the cross, bada bing, bada boom, here we are. So the great thing about weaving full width on a loom is that you don't have to do any math. <laughs> um, you, just, you just start at the end and you go across. Um, so it's gonna be super, super easy for me to do this. The hard part is going to be keeping it, keeping track of it all. So I'm going to start with two. Pull it through. Then one. And pull it through the next one. Two. Oh, <laughs> so this is why I need to pay attention because <laughs> I just pulled that through the same one. Okay, so I'm going to just go across my reed 
and slay up, slay up the whole thing. Um, and then at that point, I will start threading the petals. I'm just gonna do a straight draw. Um, so what that means is I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way across in the harnesses. And um, then I'll tie it up for plain weave and maybe a couple of other things. And I will see you after I'm done slaying this reed. Hello everyone. <laughs> um, so I finished slaying my reed. Ooh, look at this. But you'll notice I have a huge chunk of yarn here that's not slayed. Well, I made one, no wait, no, no, no. I made not one, but two mistakes. Um, one out of my favor and then another one in my favor. <laughs> so when I first did my math of how many ends per inch I needed, which was 16, ends per inch times 26 inches, I got 516 because I hand did the math. Apparently I did it wrong because I really needed 416 ends. I should have checked my math later with a calculator. Um, but you know what? It's fine. There's just a whole video with me doing math wrong on the internet. It's fine. <sighs> Anyways, um, so I measured 516 ends of yarn. Well, you're going to see or hear in an earlier clip of this video of me saying, oh, every other dent, I need to put two threads in if I want 16 ends per inch. No, uh, I needed to do every, like, do two single ends and then one double end um, would have gotten me to 16 ends per inch. But what I did got me to 18 ends per inch which should still be fine. I want a dense fabric for this outerwear jacket. So <laughs> yeah, so initially I had 100 extra threads if I were to do the 16 ends per inch, but because I did 18 ends per inch, I ended up having 50 left over. So I'm just gonna remove that. Uh, I'm gonna start threading my loom now. I feel absolutely like silly about this. So I'm going to put you on another time lapse of me threading my loom. And <laughs> yeah, like I said earlier, I'm going to do a straight draw. So that means every single heddle um, or every harness gets one thread um, over eight heddles. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and I'll just keep repeating that pattern across, uh, across the, the warp. So yeah, that made me feel a little silly. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that in just a little bit. But guys, I've been weaving for years and I still make mistakes all the time. So if you're just getting into a project or just getting into a, uh, a hobby, just know some of us who are professionals also make mistakes all the time. <laughs> and it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next clip. Hello, welcome to the backside of my loom. <laughs> um, all right, so the threading process has taken me, albeit longer time than I had expected, just because I've been trying to rest, uh, work-life balance and all. 
<laughs> but it is fully threaded now. Every thread has gone through the reed and through a heddle. It is now time to bundle them up together and wind this warp onto the back beam. So the cool thing about this particular loom, uh, again, this is the Shacked Baby Wolf, is that looms built after a certain date have a removable back beam. So what that means is the back beam that is usually sitting here, um, you can pull it out for an easier access to the back here if you're doing front to back uh, warping, which is what I'm doing. So here I have the back beam itself. And the cool thing is, as I bump the camera, I can just pop this right back in, like so. Tighten the knobs on either side, or accidentally loosen them, because I don't understand lefty loosey, ready tidy. And then bring my apron bar up and around. And what I'll be able to start doing uh, is normally I work from the middle out. Uh, I start tying these on to my apron bar. So I'll go ahead and start working on that, um, send you into a time lapse, and then wind on the warp, and that'll be the end of this video. So um, just, I guess this is a good time to ask or whatever. If you're enjoying this process and this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it actually helps quite a bit <laughs> with the algorithm. Um, and if you're not already subscribing, please hit the subscribe button because there's going to be more of this content coming. Uh, you'll see in the next video, which will come out next week, uh, the beginning of the actual weaving of the fabric. So I'll be working on cutting the fabric strips, organizing the fabric strips, and weaving the fabric for the jacket. So I'm really, really excited to get going on that. And uh, let's go ahead, get these threads tied up and put on to the back apron bar. Wow, wind the warp, her, 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 her. Uh, wind the warp on and then tie up the front and we'll have a warped loom. See you in a little bit. Hi everyone, here we are at the end of part two of the series of me making a scrappy rug jacket, rag rug jacket, whatever you want to call it. And I just wanted to show you real quick. Uh, I have indeed tied on to the front apron bar and look, 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 look. And let's just go in here. 
That's a clean shed, my friends. So that means we've done everything right <laughs> um, with the threading and the slaying of the reed and the heddles. So that's where I'm going to leave this episode, this part of the video. Uh, in the next video next week, I'm going to start weaving and probably actually get the fabric off of the loom. Um, and then the video after that, which will probably be either the last video of January or the first video of February, will have a finished jacket. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day.